The summer break could not have come at a worse time as F1 is actually good again. But uh, we still have one more classic to enjoy before we shut down for a month. This weekend, we're at spa francorchamps for the Belgian Grand Prix. Welcome to the Grid Talk podcast. I'm your host, Tom Horrocks. And today, I am joined by fellow Grid Talk hosts, Owen Medford. Hello. And George Housen. Good evening. And before we get into this episode today, we must thank our sponsor, Bet Online. Bet Online is the number one of world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything online sports betting wise. Right now, you can you can get a fifty percent off bonus for anything on your two hundred and fifty pound deposit to anything from the Olympics, baseball to Formula One racing. Bet Online, Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our casino and get online with uh, with a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our 150 plus slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online. The game starts here. And and we are arriving in Belgium this weekend, as I've already said, George. And unbelievably, there's a potential of a championship fight here. I, I feel like this weekend is, has to deliver. We all know the contract for Spa is up fairly soon, and it's always billed as an exciting race. But in recent years, it's been a bit of a Max Verstappen, just completely unopposed. The last three seasons, it's we've had smatterings of, of good races, but it's never really delivered. Can this weekend deliver for Formula One, and, and who do you rate as the favourites for this weekend? I hope so. I hope it can deliver. I mean, it's a track that I absolutely love. It's my personal favourite circuit on the calendar. I think it's an incredible venue. And it's a crying shame that, you know, there's, there's genuine threat of it falling off the calendar in a couple of years' time, which is a very thing that Liberty said Media said they'd never do, but we'll see what happens with that. But in terms of this year's race, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely got the makings of a, of a good battle. You know, you've got Max Verstappen, who has bossed the last three races, winning the last three Grand Prix here over the last three years. And you've got obviously got McLaren, who had a very dominant 1-2 in Hungary, a sentence that I never thought I'd be saying this year, but I'm so glad I am. And you've also got Mercedes as well, who won fortuitously in Austria, but absolutely on merit at Silverstone, which is a quite a similar circuit in a sense to Spa. It's another very high-speed track. So you've got three teams in a very realistic shot of victory. I, I don't think Ferrari are quite there. Aston Martin are miles off it still. But you've got potentially up to six drivers in with a chance of winning this weekend. And there's absolutely a championship battle on as well. I mean, maybe it's not so much at the moment in the drivers' championship. You've got 69 points, I think, between... No, 76 points, sorry, between Verstappen and Norris at the top of that. But the, the battle in the constructors is, is really close, like, in my opinion. So I think there's absolutely some crucial things to happen this weekend going into Belgium with it with both championship battles yeah it's, it's always Lord as a bit of a, a bit of amazing race and I, like you say it's it's my second favorite race behind Silverstone because I'm biased because I'm British and we're kind of sort of in the media and apparently British bias British media is biased so yeah so moving on to we're still going to talk about staying on the track of of Spa Fragshaw away and then just generally with with Spa as I said it's 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 an amazing track it's one of the best it would be an absolute travesty if it fell off the calendar in my opinion how about you and and your opinion for this weekend as well I'd love to see hear how you think things are going to go how badly is this needed for the future well, I think you know. I think Spa is a, obviously a classic, and it and it's a driver favourite. You know, every course, and every corner there is fearsome, and uh, you know, and the and the drivers love driving it. And what's weird for me is that you know the last couple, of, just sort of thinking back, the, the last few Grand Prix that we've had have not been particularly interesting, and that excludes twenty twenty one in some ways. I mean, for the most part, it's the, it's the driver that goes through the you know the first or second lap in front that wins, and we re- haven't really had so much of a great race. You know, I think we ju- maybe. So Spa's forgotten that it's meant to rain, apart from 2021, where it did it all in one go. And it's it's one of those things where, you know, it's it, it's kind of, it's, it's being overshadowed at, at, at times. And I, but I hope that we've sort of got a real fight. I mean, you know, bearing in mind that we've had such boring races, really, in the, in the last couple of years. Hopefully the fact that we've got seemingly at least three teams in the mix, and I think Mercedes will be back sort of on song particularly given their sort of performance in, in Silverstone, as, as, which is a similar track as George mentioned. And, you know, I think we could have them back in the mix and hopefully Ferrari will, will, will get their act together and we get a good race out of it just because I think, I think Spa needs it as it comes up to sort of the end of the contract and it's being overshadowed by some of the more newer, glitzier, you know, dare I say it, deeper pocketed races on the calendar. I, I think, you know, Spa is at, at risk of, of losing the, what Silverstone has, which is that 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 reputation for great racing with you know with, with lots of battles that we can all watch. 
Yeah, it's it's as I said um, in my opening, the sun break has come at the wrong time. Really, as F1 is really kind of getting into a bit of a gear at the moment. And and if this was a Fast and Furious film, they, we'd be frantically downshifting and putting off further down on the pedal as we speak. But uh, as it is, we're about to go into a summer break, and uh, we have to live a bit. But George, we we might actually have a championship battle on our hands. The seventy six and fifty one points respectively separating McLaren and Lando Norris from from Verstappen and Red Bull. They need McLaren needs six points per race weekend, which in itself doesn't seem like a huge amount. And Lando will need seven over just Max every week to win that title. So it that probably a little bit further beyond the realms of possibility. But what's your opinion? Because can anyone else force their way into contention? And is this fight in either championship still on? Well, I, th- I think for the constructors, it's absolutely on. Yeah, especially with the former Sergio Perez in that. In that second Red Bull, that really opens up op- opportunities. I, d- I don't think Perez had a bad race in Hungary, but the fact he qualified so far down just meant that he was out of contention before the race even started, unfortunately. And with that, there's always a chance. And the pace of McLaren was genuinely scary at Hungary. You know, if it wasn't for Norris letting Piastri through, I mean, at one point they had a nearly 20 second lead on the chasing pack, which is red bull-esque you know that's not what we really associate with mclaren in recent times at all so the fact they were so good there is extremely encouraging i don't expect them to repeat that too much for the rest of the season but there's always a chance at the end of the day so i don't think i don't think that gap in the constructors is too big to overcome at all ferrari if they're to get themselves back into because they're about 60 points so back from red bull which is not insurmountable either but they need to pick up their form and pick it up fast otherwise they don't have a chance and with how they've been ever since Monaco, I just don't see it. One podium in five races. And they were lucky to get that one podium in Austria. If, you know, if Lando and Max didn't have that collision, that wouldn't have happened. So genuinely right now, Ferrari are the four fastest team. Mercedes are too far back to challenge Red Bull. I just, I just don't see that happening. That's, you know, it's 140 odd points between them two at the moment. So I, I think realistically McLaren are the only ones that can challenge Red Bull for the constructors. But I absolutely think they can get it. The first McLaren constructors championship this millennium which is just ridiculous when you think about it. And the drivers, I think it's a big ask for Lando. I really, really do. But then again, if Max Verstappen keeps losing his cool and keeps, frankly, attacking his team and other drivers as well on the track, they could he could absolutely do it. You know, Max is rattled right now. He is absolutely rattled. He has gone from being the champion elect after a few races to being someone who... With how he's been acting, it seems like he's almost under incredible amount of pressure. You'd think there was, you know, seven points between Norris and, and Verstappen with the way Verstappen's been driving, putting desperate lunges in. But there's a massive gap, but he's acting like it's the end of the world. So honestly, anything's possible at this point. It's a really fascinating situation. I just wish that, you know, the 51 points for McLaren in the, in the Structors Championship, that's that's fine. We can live with that. I just wish there's about, you know, 20 or 30 points less. So we've just got this this fight. This, these two heavyweight youngsters grown up together, just duking it out for the championship. It was only like a year or two between them in age. It'd be great just to see them fighting toe to toe for the championship. I, I just feel it's it's probably going to come a little too late for McLaren. I just think if they'd have got those upgrades in at the start of the season, it would have been a titanic battle between two great teams. And and you mentioned Sergio Perez as well. I think maybe we've potentially done a bit of a switcheroo on our opinions on Sergio Perez as, as I as I personally believe that his performance of the weekend was probably his best performance of the season. He was only 18 seconds off Max Verstappen at the end of the race. I do feel that Max Verstappen's pace was 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 somewhat hampered by constantly being dropped into traffic and undercut. So I, I feel that potentially McLaren's lead was not as big as it was made to 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 look. But when you get the responsibility now of deciding, you've got the deciding vote on Sergio Perez. His best race since China, recovering to seventh, beating George Russell, who he started alongside. He also, say, finished within Max Verstappen's pit window, which he's not done for a long time, considering where he started. That's that's a pretty good revival, certainly for, or is it just a flash in the pan? Can you see him saving his seat, or is, and is, he, is he in line for a good performance this weekend? I think one thing that we got to take count of is that I think maybe... You know, I'm going to come out and say, I think genuinely Hungary flattered. I, th- I think it flattered Sergio Perez's performance. We're talking about a driver who hasn't finished on the podium in what at the time was the fastest car on the grid since China. Hasn't finished in the top five since Miami, just one race later. And, you know, has retired twice since then as well. Numerically, he's no better off. He only re- reached seventh, which ever since that run of form, he hasn't, he hasn't sort of made it past that, you know, made it even into the top five at all in, in what is still a very, very quick racing car. And I think 
that, that you have to face the fact that Max Verstappen rides a very pointy car, and that's not how you get, extract the best performance out of Hungary. Whereas we know Sergio is more about saving his tyres, which should have seen him in even better stead than it did at Hungary, I would say, even though he did start very, very far down. I want the, that point to be known. But but apart from that, you know, the, the kind of the, the characteristics of the track that Verstappen didn't like driving in, you know, I think that brought him back towards Sergio Perez. And Sergio Perez's driving style maybe suited what was needed to, to save the tyres in, in the way that you needed to at Hungary. So I think this is more... It's, it's more to do with that, maybe. And as such, I don't see that getting better at some of the tracks we've got coming up, particularly Spa. I mean, there's rumours that there's a break clause in his contract that if he doesn't stay within around around 100 points. And, I mean, mathematically, it's impossible for him to stay within 100 points now. That, that was, you know, that's, that's what we're looking at. I don't... I, I personally... I mean, I like Perez as a driver. I think I liked him more when he was lower... You know, when he was, when he was doing a lot with cars that shouldn't be able to do it. But I think the point is that that Red Bull really if they want to win a championship they need drivers who are closer and better to Max Verstappen being 0.4 of a second away or whatever it is is fine when you are a second faster than everyone else but when you're not it isn't and you know that we're I think sport is all the generally a, an area of constantly changing and constantly resetting expectations and he's not meeting the expectations that he needs to be at this point I don't know I'm fully on board the Sergio Perez hype train now 2025 world champion Checo Perez you heard it here first yeah I mean he didn't have those same upgrades that Verstappen had either but I mean they may well have been downgrades and and it may well be that Verstappen was actually you know performing out of his skin but all these upgrades they put on the car just made the car slower who knows but I'm going to keep with you talking as eloquently as you were about Max Verstappen you can continue to do that George as he made headlines in the race with his radio broadcasts and and I've actually clipped up every single comment negative comment that he made during that race and it amounts to a minute 45 of constant Max Verstappen whinging it's a great listen I'm definitely going to be involving that in the monkey seat in some capacity in the next couple of days whenever we record our review but beyond that do you see this weekend as a chance for Verstappen to silence those critics and with a calm measured performance as he's as I said he's won here three years in a row or will he double down and take the fight to his doubters and and tell GP to F off and all that kind of stuff that we were expected of him of the last weekend. I mean, I mean it's, it's definitely an opportunity for him to silence his critics. Unfortunately, it is also an opportunity for him to amplify them. I mean, what year was it now? 20, 2017, I think, something like that, where Max Verstappen moved under braking against Kimi Raikkonen and nearly caused an airplane crash down the Camel Ke- Strait. And that event if i'm not wrong of something like it anyway because he did quite a few of them that season that actually brought in the verstappen rule the don't move under braking rule which is still in place in formula one which now he cries on the radio to people like hamilton oh he's moving under braking no mate he's turning to the corner (laughs) the one that you're not going to make breaking like that you know it, it really does give an opportunity for him to do better of course this is a track where he knows it very well he is he was actually born in belgium Belgium and his mum is Belgian. So he knows the place very well. He's he's won here three times with two actual races. Obviously, 2021 wasn't really a race, was it? But still absolutely dominant here. But that was with a very dominant Red Bull as well. And a Red Bull that was incredible in a straight line in particular. That Red Bull Honda power unit really, really coming up clutch for sure. Um, I don't see him repeating it, to be honest. I could definitely see him winning for sure. There's definitely a possibility, but... To say that he's going to be clear best ahead of the McLarens and the Mercedes, I I don't really see it to be honest. And there could there could well be a situation where he's having to fight through traffic or Red Bull do a bad strategy or or a longer pit stop. And we saw Red Bull do a three second pit stop. How long has it been since they've done one of those? Even they're feeling the pressure now. And again, like I said in my previous comments, you know Max Max is acting like he's under a huge amount of pressure when really he should not be given the points gap. He, but that, that's the way he is, though. He wants to win every single race. And if he's not in a position to win every single race, everything is wrong. The team's not good enough. The car's not good enough. It's a disgrace. It's an embarrassment. And he's going to let them know on the radio. So we could see a, well see a repeat of Mad Max. I think it's absolutely on the cards, but we'll see. Interesting. Interesting indeed. I mean, obviously, we know last year McLaren were right on the pace. And then we came to Spa and they didn't have a Spa-specific wing. Reliable sources, namely Andrea Stella, in an interview post race said they've got uh, a new rear wing coming for Spa to hopefully, hopefully address that. And a, a personal contact of mine who works for McLaren said there are more upgrades coming in the next few races. So hopefully they won't go the way of Red Bull's updates and they'll actually make the car faster. And then we can see a, as a just not only some some great wins for Lando and Oscar 
and then also a championship fight. I would love to see a few more a few more race wins from the other guys up there. Let's get an eighth driver on there to to win a race. Seven winners so far. Let's get an eighth one there. We all know it's not going to be Perez, so we can have a nice surprise winner from somewhere in the pack. That'll be that'll be great, just to really kind of keep the season alive and and, and have for some to 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 enjoy going into the final race of the season. As I said on the on the Grid Talk review, just go into the last race of the season with just twenty four points behind. You know that kind of thing. That, that that's fine. You know, we, so we got something to, to cheer for. But looking at in in the realms of reality and underachieving, OA, I'm giving you Ferrari. So they've now dropped to third in the championship. And they're only 16 points behind McLaren, but they were ahead of McLaren going into this weekend. And But they do feel like they know what's going wrong. It does seem to be a high-speed issue, so potentially not really going to be any better this weekend. Two great drivers, though. Can you see them getting back into the constructors' battle with Red Bull and McLaren? And can Spa be any worse for them? And they're not actually that far away from, from McLaren specifically. I, I've just been sort of, you know, reading about it and... You know, there's sort of it's this new flaw in the high speed that is their biggest issue. That's where they're bouncing. They seem to be the only team that's still struggling with it, really, at the downfall. You know, the, the moment they're adding downforce like this, which is a bit worrying, actually. You know, apparently they think it's an area issue rather than a fundamental car flaw, which is well, yeah, which is obviously good. But you know, there's there, there's talk of them sort of reverting to the Imola spec of flaw, and if I, I assume they've they've you know, they know what they're doing. I assume they've worked it out such that it's possible to, you know, use a use a previous spec floor and and maybe the front wing and, and everything around that will work sort of, you know, fairly well with that. But it's not ideal, really. You want to be adding performance to the car in that way, and then just, you know, in general, it should it should sort of fix everything. You know, it should sort of make everything better, and then you just tune it with the error level or whatever that you would like to would like to be running. I, I just don't think from for Ferrari, it, it does seem that they're they're just a little bit sort of lost at sea a little. Like they, they they don't know exactly where they're going, and it's that kind of uncertainty that that slows you down. Unfortunately, you can't just bring up to the update upgrades to the car and gradually walk your way up the grid. I think if they have a good performance in in Spa, I don't think that they're that far away from it. And they, you have to remember that they did, you know, if they use the old spec sort of real parts on the car, were well, the ones that they used in Imola, and Imola worked out fairly well for them. And so, and bearing in mind that Spa is not that dissimilar to Imola in some ways, I don't think that could go too badly for them. I think it just, it really does hinge on this weekend. If they have a good weekend, yeah, they're back in the fight 100%. If they don't, I think it's going to be a hard, hard summer break um, with a long time to ruminate on, 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 the, on the issues that they've made, that they've got, sorry. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting, interesting comparison to see. I'd say if they do end up going back to, to previous spec to see if the car had actually been made slower or if they just stood still. It's not a not comfortable place to be if you are driving in red right now. And hopefully they can get that sorted out so we can actually have a bit of a fight towards the end of the season. But if you've enjoyed this podcast, uh, we would love it if you could leave us a five star rating on Spotify or a five star review on Apple Podcasts. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider helping us out with a like and subscribe and be sure to follow our social channels at Grid Talk UK to stay up to date with the show. But moving into the second half of this this conversation about the Belgian Grand Prix, we are going to talk about Mercedes, George. So they are definitely back in contention for big points. They, but they've won two out of the last three races, but they still seem to have the third solid best car. Can you see this changing this weekend on a higher speed setup? And their last podium here was... It was way back in that race that wasn't a race in 2021, which, yeah, it seems, seems considering they've actually been quite competitive at times you think, and quite prolific podium scorers, thought maybe they'd have got, had at least one driver on the podium between between 2021 and now, but it's not been the case. And can you see that change in this weekend in a season that really started off as their worst in this, in this new ground effect era, but now all of a sudden they're back in it? Yeah, I, I can see it changing, to be honest with you. I think if you look at the races they've won, um, I mean, I mentioned that Silverstone's quite similar to Spa, and I think it is, that one as well. But on top of that, the Red Bull ring is another high-speed circuit. They could have won in Canada, which is a high-speed circuit. They seem to do quite well around there. And they also seem to struggle around lower-speed tracks and tracks that have got a high t- temperature, and Hungary is, was both of those uh, this last weekend. So I feel like that probably hurt them a bit. That being said, Sir Lewis still got his 200th podium in Formula 1, 200 on pure pace at the end of the day you know he absolutely deserved it I've, i mean george would have been up there as well if he didn't qualify so badly so i feel i feel like there's absolutely a chance of them getting back to winning ways i would say if you look at that performance over the last few races or so with high speed tracks anyway i'd say they're probably the favorites going off for that but it's going to be tight because spa is a different beast to any of these and it's the highest of high speed tracks over the monza it's it's a spectacular track and you're right it's a track that at times has been 
troubling for Mercedes. I mean, we had Rosberg and Hamilton clash here in 2014. We've not had many podium sitters either. Ferrari have been quite good here as well with, you know, potentially, allegedly, slightly dodgy engines, but we'll skip past that. But anyway, yeah, they've they've had they've had some good times, had some bad times here. I think they're absolutely in the mix, but to say the favourites, it's, yeah, it's a bold prediction, I must admit. But I, th- I, th- I feel like potentially they could be. Who would be better, Lewis or George? Don't really know. It's not been Lewis's best track compared to most of them over the years, but still, he's won here four times, so he's not bad either around here. He's only won here four times. That's, yeah, shocking. Less than, less than half of Silverstone. He's rubbish. Absolutely <laughs> shocking. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yeah, no, I, I I think it all depends on that rear wing from McLaren. If that solves the issues they had last year, then I think they'll probably go in favourites. But if if it doesn't, then then I think I I like you. I think potentially Red Bull they gonna need to bring changes to this this car if they want to bring it back into the uh, back into the fight. But one team that definitely will not be in the fight for the win, I think it's safe to say, Owain, is Aston Martin. They had a very anonymous race last time out. And had the race not been fraught with controversy up front, they probably would have been making headlines with Alonso's grumpy granddad a conversation on the radio that he was getting on that bandwagon. He fell victim to an ignored team order as well, which kind of went unnoticed. It was, from what I understand, it was uh, Lance Stroll was ordered past him and said he'd give it back if he doesn't get the position. He never gained the position back. So Alonso himself in a bit of self-sabotage mode as well. Stroll just 21 points behind him as well. The team seems to be in a bit of disarray. What's going on at Aston Martin? I mean, do we know really? It's so, it's so weird, you know. There's something you would expect out of Fernando Alonso. Maybe, maybe Lance Stroll has learned a little bit too much about, you know, ignoring a team order. I don't think there's going to be any consequences to that because how can you penalise someone who's, you know, ultimately can say, "I'm going to go tell my dad." You know, it's, it, 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 I think it's, it's oh, that's not good as a management environment, um, you know, in general. And and to be honest with you, they're far and away away from from being you know from even wanting to be in this kind of scenario you know as we've talked about the 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 um, sorry the the mclaren issues that they've had that was over a race win and it's a, you know that's a good problem to have you don't want to be when, when you're sort of midway down the grid you haven't you know you haven't sort of performed at anywhere near what the, the kind of potential that you seem to have even just a year ago it, it, it's not the time where you want to be fighting within teammates and clearly they are i mean i'll put it this way Fernando Alonso is not exactly the the shortest memoried person in the world, and but we've seen it at this very track forty. What was it? Set, I'm sorry, oh God, I can't even remember how many years ago it is now. A number in two thousand and seven, when you know Fernando Alonso would, was not happy with the way things were going, and and absolutely put pulled an egregious move on Lewis Hamilton. So by staying in the pits, all right, I, I don't think for a second this is done and dusted. If he was grumpy before, he's going to be angry now, and uh, as we know, you know. Honestly, it might have just uh, done the worst thing possible, which is which is Lance Stroll make Fernando Alonso angry in a situation that he wasn't particularly happy with to begin with. I I, I don't know what it's going to be like for, for Aston Martin, but I can only imagine it, you know, causing even more fractions with, fractions within the team and and opening them up to to sort of attacks from behind with everyone sort of trying to pinch points off them because I don't think they're going to fall back into the clutches of RB. What is it? The uh, the RB carb, but you never know if things get particularly fractious. Oh yeah, you never know what I mean with both RB drivers, they've they've got a lot to fight for as well. We are gonna talk about RB next, George. Both drivers, I think the way it's panned out, unbelievably, both drivers will fancy their chances of being in a different seat after the summer break. And I do mean a seat further up the grid. Even Liam Lawson is in with a shout of that seat amazingly. In your opinion, which of the RB two RB drivers are going to be in the, in their seat in a current seat? I'm sorry, are they both going to be still still in situ, or will it be someone else? And how are they going to cope with this season long battle? Can you see them catching Aston Martin, and, or is it just a fight with them and Haas for P7? I think it's most likely a, a fight between them and Haas for P7. I mean, Aston have just got enough about them to keep that. They've got over double the points of RB, so I think they'll be safe. I think what's going to save them mainly is that RB. I haven't really had that many standout results. I mean, they've had a few, but nothing too crazy. Aston are consistently picking up a few points every race, at least, which is something. So I think I can't really see them getting ahead of safe. But that battle with them in Haas is a, a really close one. Haas have been pulling out some incredible results. We're not particularly great in Hungary, obviously, but Austria and, and Silverstone, exceptional, particularly from Nico Hulkenberg. But the, oh, the driver situation at RB. I mean, I've, I've been covering this a lot with, with the F1 Chronicle recently, and it is... To, to say it's a merry-go-round would do it an injustice. The amount of permutations and potential scenarios just for this summer break 
let alone thinking 25, is off the scale. And I think it, it, it's just such a crazy environment to be involved in. I can't imagine what the drivers must be thinking. You know, you've got Daniel Ricciardo, who one week is being tipped for a Red Bull drive, and then the next week he's been tipped to be sacked. You, you just have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, for what it's worth, for what I would do, and this is probably not what Red Bull were doing, <laughs> to in fairness, I would, keep, I would keep Sergio Perez. I would keep Sergio Perez at Red Bull. Because whoever you put into that, if you put in Sonoda, you're going to destroy his career. If you put in Ricardo, you're going to... I mean, we know what Ricardo's going to do at, at Red Bull. He's been there before. He's a solid driver. But is he going to be better than Perez there learning a new car? Probably not. And then you've got to deal with Max Verstappen as well, which I can't imagine is particularly easy. Liam Lawson being in the, in the Red Bull senior seat is just insanity and that would probably kill his career so just a funny message to won't repeat there in the chat that we're having between them but but uh but yeah no i i, I think for what it's worth i think they're probably going to stay where they are but but i can't ignore liam lawson either because with how red bull are with promoting young drivers they really want to get him in that seat that he's coming to every race his presence is there you know and and they're not they're not doing that without any good reason so I think there's every chance that Lawson could replace Ricardo, but I don't really see Sonoda moving. I think he might go to Master Martin at some point, but not until 26 at this point. But I think they'll probably stay the same. But the amount of noise coming out of those outfits is, is biblical, to be honest. So many permutations and a prediction from George Housen, nothing's going to change. So fantastic. Now, I, 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 I get my opinion on the grid talk with you, and I, I don't think it's right, but I think... Ricardo will end up in that seat. I think it's the wrong decision, but I just think that's what Red Bull want to do. So, and they're clearly not going to promote Sonoda. But so, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen there? Is uh, we we've seen some Stranger Things. Maybe Nick DeVries will end up in that car ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. Who knows? But so I'm going to finish talking about uh, the rest of the season one here. How we've got we got Williams, Alpine, and Sauber. Williams scraped a point here back in 2022. Was the last time they got anything. Alpine as a slightly more slick, better outfit than they are right now. They've, they've scored quite some decent points here in, in recent times. But Sauber, you've got to go back to Marcus Ericsson in 2018 for the last time they got a point here. So which of those three teams can you see challenging the points this weekend, if any? Um, I, I mean, I know you sort of, I, I, I know you said that Williams hasn't sort of really challenged for the points here since 2022 i think that was you know that was the era of the of the very 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 slippery williams they managed to sort of hold up everyone in the drs trade and then was just just about fast enough in the corners to to keep ahead through the middle sector obviously they've been a bit more sort of tumultuous since then what with the changes um, since valves arrival as they as they you know rebuild the team but you have to look at the performances thus far i mean of the two teams i don't think it's uh, sorry of the three teams that you sort of that you mentioned i think kick uh Sauber ferrari is out they're not gonna you know they're not gonna manage it i don't think i don't think they've been particularly performant at any point you know it, it's hard to find a time when they finished above 13th for example in the last few races i think that's that that is their highest finish that so would take a, a, a massive upgrade for them to to get anywhere near they probably have to bolt on all the ferrari bits and hope by comparison williams and alpine seem to seem a lot closer i would have to go with williams so out of those two i don't for some reason alpine seem to have return to the days of the you know of the of the teapot car with you know having a two, two retirements in the last two races and although they yeah two retirements in the last two races are not particularly good performances prior to that they, they you know they lost they, they've been in the top 10 just before that but apart from that i think it's i think it's williams i think they seem a little bit more on the um, on the ascendancy and clearly they know sort of they, they know how to perform at Spa. I mean, uh, I know it was a sort of a year ago, but two years ago, but I, I can fully see them uh, getting into that position if you sort of with, with relative ease, if they, if they're, uh, any team of those three is going to pick up anything. Yeah, I think, and by Williams, I'm, I think you probably mean Alex Albon. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying you're predicting there to be points for Logan Sargent in this race, but uh, no, no, fast, fast in a straight line. He's like all Americans; he can manage it, right? Depends. This is just one long left turn. No, it's, it's, yeah, he's had, he's had a better few weeks, but I think it's too little, too late for Logan Sargent. Definitely there, and yeah, it's. Yes, can be difficult for any of those three teams, I think, unless we have rain, which is predicted for practice, but not the race. So. Who knows? That may move. That may well move into the race day by the time we get there. So we're just going to look at predictions now before we go. So I'm going to ask my panel here to give me a pole position, a winner, and a bold prediction. George, I'm going to go for the pole. I'm going to go with George Russell. I think Mercedes are going to have the fastest car this weekend, particularly over one lap. For the for the win, I mean, are we, do, are we just doing the winner? We do the podium. We normally go podium, don't we? Go podium as well. 
Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's fill out the top three. I'll go with Sir Lewis to win. I've just got a funny feeling he'll manage to do it. Five wins at Belgium. I tried that ice so he's not particularly great. I'll put Oscar Piastri in P2. I feel like that win is going to really give him a big confidence boost. And I'll go with our pole sitter, George Russell, in P3. Bold prediction. I mean, Owen, you just said there's not a lot of chance of Sauber getting a point, but I'm going for it. Top 10 for us. Valtteri Bottas in the points. It's happening. Ahead of his big move to Williams next year. You heard it here first. I'm probably last. You've taken most of mine, George. I have most of those. I'll have to change mine. Go on away. What's your prediction? I'm going to go with Oscar Piastri to get the pole. That's next time. Yeah, yeah. You had, you had all the all the opportunity in the world as the host, and yet you didn't. Oscar Piastri to get a pole. I think for the podium, I think it's going to be... You know what? I'm going to go with the Mercedes 1-2. I'm going to go with Russell in first, and then Hamilton in second. You know, I don't... Maybe the McLarens are running to each other or something like that. And then, you know, uh, I'm going to go with Max Verstappen in third. And then for the bold prediction, which is not going to go with anything I've predicted thus far, I'm going to go with Ferrari on the podium. Okay, you took a load of mine as well. So I've now had to completely change all of mine. So I don't have to. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to. I completely change from all of my predictions. I'm going to go for a Lando Norris pole and the podium. It's going to be a very disappointing Max Verstappen win with Lando Norris in second and Lewis Hamilton in third. And my bold prediction, I, I haven't thought of one now because George took mine. And my backup was Ferrari. So what am I going to do? A bold prediction. Logan Sargent points. There we go. Logan Sargent points. Fantastic. Right. I'm annoyed. I thought I had some really good spicy predictions there, which are also quite possible. But no, you had to steal, steal my predictions from me. So opportunity for promotion now. So, George, where can people hear more from you? You can hear more of my hot takes on Formula One and a bunch of other sports, including football, NASCAR, IndyCar and a bunch of us over on uh, F1 Chronicle and our associate channels. Uh, we put out a lot of articles, we put out a lot of videos as well. YouTube, TikTok. Instagram, Microsoft Start, Facebook, Twitter, probably some others as well that I can't remember. Oh, our podcast as well. Our podcast versions, our audio versions are all on Spotify and Apple Music as well. So yeah, you can go check us out on all those. Cool. Are we on Truth Social? No, we better not touch that. Oh, wait, where can people hear more from you? Oh, I had a joke and I'm not going to say it. Um... <laughs> Uh, you can hear. I don't have anything that you could. It's, I'll be honest with you. You're not going to hear that joke up wherever I wherever I am online either. But if, but if you'd like to hear about more about the Peter series, as always, I will will absolutely promote our very very good Formula Talk hosted by Sophia Richmond. I think maybe some days are being taken off for that one. But but well, basically, when we get back to it, you'll be able to hear all of the news in the feeder series to Formula One, like the fact that nobody can get apparently get a seat, or maybe they can. Who knows? All the places that you find Grid Talk, just search for Formula Talk to hear that. Fantastic! Yeah, great show. Thor- thoroughly recommend that as well. And if you do want to hear any more from me, I'm on the Monkey Soup podcast with my friend Carl. Grid Talk Uncut, we call it. It's basically just us prattling around, saying stuff that doesn't make any sense. So. Look for Monkey C on wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find us. But Grid Talk, though, back to the main event, is available on YouTube where most episodes are recorded live. This one being a preview is not. We are also on Amazon Fire, Spotify, Apple Music, Verbal, and Pocket Cast. Just search for Grid Talk to find our back catalogue of shows, previews, reactions, interviews, qualifying results, race results. And please do consider supporting us on our Patreon as well to help us keep doing what we're doing, get better mics, lights, recording equipment. And also make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube to get whenever you get an episode live. Just click the bell so we so you know that we're live and you can come and join us in our chat and do it, join us in our post shows as well. We will be back soon for with plenty more F1 content. So thank you very much to our panel and thank you to the listeners listening to Grid Talk presented by Bet Online. Goodbye. <laughs>